Lisa called the math lady. Today we're going to be talking about finding the percent of a number, part two. Now, we've done a little bit of this work before where I've asked you to translate English terms into math terms, right? So take a look at this first problem. We're going to do the same thing, but we're going to take it one step further to find percent. Okay, here we go. What percent? Now remember, when we don't know what it is that we're looking for, we're going to put a W for our what, and we're going to put a little P down here to say that we're, it's really to remind us that we're looking for a percent, okay? What percent of, in math means, multiply, and 25 is already mathematical, so we're going to leave it, and we know that is means equals, equal sign, 15. So now we have our mathematical statement. This is really a missing number in multiplication. So we do the opposite. We divide to find the answer. So we're going to divide on this side of the equation, 25. We're going to divide on this side of the equation, 25. Well, what does that leave us with? We cross out our 25 there, and we're left with what percent equals 15 over 25. Now, we're not really at a percent yet, are we? We're still at a fraction. And remember, a percent is really a fraction where the denominator is what? I was going to say zero. A hundred, right? The denominator is a hundred. So why don't we turn this fraction into a denominator that, it, you know, it's equal to a denominator of a hundred. Well, luckily we have a nice easy problem to start here. So this translates, we can make this 25 times what is a hundred? 25 times four is a hundred. So what you do to the bottom, you got to do to the top. Here we go. 15 times four is going to be 60. And we know that we have a fraction over 100. That is the same thing as saying, okay, drop the denominator and put a percent sign next to it. So 60 over 100 is really the same thing as 60%. Okay, that's problem number one. Here's problem number two. I've given you something a little bit more difficult. See, that first problem, we had a nice denominator of 100. It was beautiful. But let's see what happened this time. Let's translate. What percent, what percent, that's a W by the way, of, multiply, $75 is $30. Okay, mathematical statement, missing number in multiplication, so we divide to find the answer. Let's divide both sides by our 75. And this crosses out, which leaves us with what percent equals 30 over 75? And we can put our dollar signs there. At the end, we're looking for a percent, so the dollar signs aren't going to matter that much. Now, before I had this beautiful, you know, denominator that was 25, I could make it to 100 pretty easily. I don't here, so what do I do? Well, you might remember to find the percent of any fraction we are going to divide, right? Because fractions are really division problems. So let's divide. 75 into 30. And my decimal point is right there. Now, I'm just going to go ahead and add myself an extra zero because I have a feeling I'm going to need it. And now we divide. Can 75 go into 30? No, it cannot. That's why I needed the extra zero. But can 75 go into 300? Yes, it can. It goes in how many times? Four times. 75 times four, there's my decimal, is 300, right? Five times four is 20. I carry my two. Seven times four is 28, plus my two is 300. So boom, we're down to zero, which gives us 0.4 for our decimal. Well, to turn our decimal into a percent, we're going to move it two spaces to the right. So 0 0.4, I'll write it here so you can see, becomes 40%. Okay, so if we don't have that nice, easy denominator that you can turn into 100, we simply have to divide, get our decimal, move it two points to the right, and we're ready to go. Now here's a different kind of problem. We don't have to always ask what percent is. You changed it around here. Here I've given you the percent, but we have to find the number. You still translate, so let's do it. 40%. Now, 40%, we're going to turn into a decimal, right? And we know that decimal 
is 0.4. It's 0 0.40, which is the same as 0 0.4. Of what number is 124? Okay, we still have a missing number in multiplication, so we do the opposite to find it, we divide. So we're going to divide both sides by our 0.4. Put my zero in front of, you know I'm really bad at doing that, but I forget to put the zero in front. Okay, divide this side by point, oops, see now it made me all mess up, 0 0.4. Okay, let's work one side at a time. This side, everything's going to cancel out, I'm left with what number? Over here, I have 124 divided into 0.4. So essentially, here, we're going to do our division, right? The only change here is we have a decimal in the denominator. So you know we're going to need to clear that decimal. All right, let's do it over here. You know me, always running out of space. Here we go. 0.4. There we go into 124. So we need to clear our decimal. We know there's a decimal here. So we're going to move this one space to the right. But if I move it one space to the right here, I got to move it one space to the right over here as well. Boom. And there's my decimal point. Now let's do the math. 4 into 124. 4 into 12 goes 3 times. 4 into 4 goes 1 time. 4 into 0 goes 0 time and we're done, okay? Mental math there. So 310 is our answer. 40% of 310 is 124. And that's it. So you've seen a couple of problems. The key here is to remember to translate and then you solve, but your last step is to make sure you convert it to a percent. So you're gonna move it from a fraction to a percent or a decimal to percent, and you know how to do that. If you forgot, go back and watch that video, okay? All right, that's it for me today. It's the Cold Math Lady. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.